Um, welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by your friends here at Kativ Technologies. I'm Nigel Labayek, one of the customer success uh, managers here at Kativ, and uh, your host for AVA today and just about every other day. Today, we're going to be going over uh, some stuff in AutoCAD Electrical, specifically um, introduction into Circuit Builder, which is a component of AutoCAD Electrical. And today's class is going to be taught to you all by um, Adam Evangelista. Adam, how's it going? Not too bad, Nigel. How's it going yourself? It's going well. It's going well. Adam is one of the application engineers here on the team, works uh, really closely with our customer success team. If you've called in for a support case in the past, uh, not surprised if you've talked to my good friend here, Adam, um, once or twice. If you need any help with, uh, you know, things Autodesk related, Adam's the guy to call. If you want anime recommendations, Adam's also the guy to call. So uh, without further ado, Adam, I'll go ahead and let you get started here, introduce yourself, and uh, let's get going. Absolutely. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me once again. My name is Adam Evangelista, and I'll be your host here today as we talk about Introduction to Circuit Builder. Okay, before we go much further, let's go ahead and check out the agenda and see what's in store for ourselves here today. And so the agenda for today, it's going to be pretty straightforward, right? Um, as the name suggests, we're going to be talking about Circuit Builder today. And so we're going to start with a simple introduction, lay the groundwork a little bit, and talk about ourselves um, and we're going to motivate our conversations here today with why I use Circuit Builder. Um, I think Circuit Builder is especially interesting in contrast with something like saved circuits inside of AutoCAD Electrical, for example. Um, and the bulk of today is going to be talking about the configurations you can do to Circuit Builder itself while you're using it. Um, and then we're going to bookend everything with a, with a note on customizing Circuit Builder uh, on the end as well. Okay. And then we'll have a nice little wrap up at the end uh, for any other lingering questions or conversations you'd guys like to start. Um, that sound all right to everyone? That sound all right to you, Nigel? Yeah, it looks good to me. Well, I like to hear, man. Uh, there's a picture on the right. It's a brain with a little uh, IC in the middle and some circuits coming off of it. Uh, not unlike what we'll be doing here today, but <laughs> I wanted to note this came from the Eagle page on Autodesk, which also does uh, PCB design and stuff like that, if you're curious. <laughs> A lot of cross-referencing for you all there. Okay, so just a little introduction. And Nigel already talked a little bit about it. My name is Adam Evangelista. I'm an application engineer here at Kativ Technologies, and as such, I'm responsible for the variety of Autodesk solutions that we have here. Um, in particular, some of the services I provide via Kativ uh, include Lifeline and training. And so, like Nigel said, if you've ever called them to support, there's a good chance we may have talked already whether we're doing installs, activations, or troubleshooting some of your workflows. Uh, some of the trainings and again if you've ever been on any of my jumpstart stuff or autocad inventor or vault i do some of the um, preliminary ground uh, orientation training for those programs um, in general i'm just kind of knowledgeable in inventor uh, professional uh, the autocad platform as a whole because it is a whole platform and there's a lot of different parts of autocad uh, we also do a lot of vault data management here as well <laughs> and so uh, Autodesk solution is very wide and varied, and we have at least some approximate knowledge of all that stuff. So if you guys have any questions, especially as AutoCAD Electrical may relate to other programs, let us know, because there's probably a bigger conversation to be had there. Okay. And uh, as for my previous experience, uh, you know, before here, I worked at Gatee. I used to work at this makerspace over in Los Alamitos. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, makerspaces are kind of just uh, community-owned workshops, essentially, that take kind of advanced, otherwise advanced and inaccessible fabrication methods, stuff like CNC, laser cutters, make, uh, 3D printers, and the like. And people would come there, take classes, and build stuff themselves. And so, you know, they help people make things at that job, and I also help people make things at this job here as well. So, do we have any questions so far? <laughs> all right, feeling good? Feeling all right? Yep, we're good to go. Right on. So, uh, let's get into our first topic of conversation then. Why use Circuit Builder? And before I go much further, um, Nigel, I think I'd like to pop off the first poll question. Um, I'm really curious, just uh, out of our audience, uh, who currently uses Circuit Builder and like who's interested in using Circuit Builder? I feel like those two options might be maybe too inclusive per se, but I'm assuming if you're on this call, you guys are probably interested in using Circuit Builder. Um, but I guess I'm also curious how many people are currently using it as well. And so I think you guys should see some kind of pop up on your screen right now. Go ahead and include, uh, or go ahead and answer and respond to that poll if you can. 
cool. It's been up there for about 30 seconds. I'll go ahead and end it right now um, what and we share doing? the results. Um, so Adam, I'm sure you can see this on your end. It oh. is super oh. skewed towards, I'm not using it yet. Right on. Okay. Please teach me. This is the right AVA, guys. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, right on. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Circuit Builder, it, it is, well, I guess let's get into it. Why, why are we even interested in Circuit Builder? I'm glad you guys are interested and I'm glad you guys are here today. So hopefully we can do the topic justice. All right, so why are we interested in using Circuit Builder, right? These CAD programs and drafting programs in general, right? All about saving time and reducing mistakes. And inside of AutoCAD Electrical, Circuit Builder is especially about that more so than some of the other commands. Um, as, as you can imagine, Circuit Builder is about uh, both configuring and automatically placing a circuit for yourself. And this is usually contrasted with the save circuits command inside of AutoCAD Electrical. Um, some conversations I've had, it sounds like Circuit Builder may be a bit more niche than Safe Circuits is, for example. And depending on your use case, you might want to be aware of both of those instances uh, regardless. Um, with that said, Circuit Builder uh, compared to the Safe Circuits is all about being able to um, configure your drawing and automatically place it with the right annotations and attributes that you're interested in. Safe Circuits is more like um, designing a circuit yourself, putting it, drawing it, and then replacing it in the future. Uh, a la, uh, kind of like you would with traditional drawing blocks inside of AutoCAD, for example. Uh, when I was practicing this presentation, I was like, I need a good metaphor to compare these two things. You know, save circuits is like going to McDonald's and ordering a cheeseburger, and you could, you know, take pickles on or off. While, while circuit builder is more like Subway, where you literally configure the whole sandwich uh, as you go down the line. <laughs> And so it's a bit more of a customized experience. It's a bit more of an automated uh, intelligence that you have to work with. And uh, that's the reason why we come to it in the first place. And I think one of the higher level operations of Circuit Builder is also that it is highly customizable. Um, most of the uh, default examples that we're going to be looking at here today are all going to be about uh, motor controls and power delivery in particular. And so, you know, I looked up a picture of a 3D motor and a cool little cross, you know, section that was I found on the internet. Good stuff. And ultimately, we're going to be building stuff like this, this little uh, uh, three-phase motor control circuit over here. Um, and if you guys ever had to design one of these from scratch, you know, they could be a bit tedious. And there's a lot of different parts and a lot of different dependencies that you may or may not be interested in uh, for specking it out. But ultimately, um, you could use a safe circuit for something like this. However, um, Circuit Builder does largely the same thing while allowing you a bit more flexibility in how you place and design it ultimately. Okay. And so it is, uh, it, that said, it is fairly easy to use. Uh, it is a bit harder to customize and actually get going than maybe a regular save circuit. So uh, depending on what you guys feel like, maybe we'll even cover a save circuit if, if that feels like it's necessary. Okay. Now, any questions about Circuit Builder or like when to use it exactly? All right, okay, cool. All right, yeah, let's get into it, right? Let's see what this, uh, this whole circuit builder thing is all about, shall we? So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and X out over here. Uh, I already have AutoCAD Electrical open. Um, I'm working in AutoCAD Electrical 2021. As far as I know, there hasn't been any major changes to the formula since uh, this year version, but um, let's check it out. And so what I have open right here, um, this is an NFPA demo, right? Uh, this is the part of the sample files that are available in AutoCAD already. Um, if you guys don't have these projects, you could uh, click open and you could actually find these under your installation path over here. So uh, documents, a CAD-E 2021 AE data project, and there should be a list of different projects in DWP that you could check over here, okay? Um, and that said, we usually use the NFPA demos just to uh, have a good reference for different things over here. So uh, under the schematics for NFPA demo, for example, we have um, some, a three-phase motor control circuit right over here, right? And so again, I'm, I'm assuming that you guys may have had some experience with designing motor controls already, um, but this is largely gonna be the type of circuit that we're gonna be developing with Circuit Builder, right? Uh, these drawings were probably made a long time ago uh, by some other people when they first set up these samples, but um, these aren't that bad to set up manually, right? You could easily place like a three-phase motor and you could place um, a three-phase motor across here on a vertical bus. And you could, you know, place your circuits and linked over here and you could just, you know, go through, keep adding components, drawing lines, changing colors. Um, that's doable, right? 
And with most people learning CAD, right, the first day, it's usually about learning the basics of the drafting, right, how to draw lines, how to place components. Uh, but usually by the second day, people are already asking me, like, Adam, like, how do I save myself from this tedium? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about here today. Um, and so again, moving forward, I'm assuming that most people are probably familiar with the manual method of building circuits inside of AutoCAD Electrical, but primarily just you know, putting down wires and placing down components, adding attributes and uh, pulling in the catalog information accordingly. We're going to show you guys a nice, easy way to automate that using circuit build, however. Okay. And so um, that's just the NFPA demo. And I set up a duplicate project over here and I just set up some scratch paper for ourselves here today. So I'm going to go ahead and open that drawing over here. And notice my project is active now. And let's make ourselves some room over here, why don't we, by lowering the command line a little bit, coming in over here. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, normally, you know, we would probably start by just placing down a ladder and you start placing down the components and start, you know, doing all our other business and annotating and changing wires and stuff. Uh, but this time we're just going to go up to Circuit Builder over here. You can see the command line, the AEC circuit builder over there. Go ahead and click that. And this is going to be the first box that you see right off the bat with circuit builder. Okay. Um, it's a lot of different stuff to talk to, and it really depends on what your particular workflow is going to require, right? Uh, right off the bat, you see a list of default circuits. And this list of default circuits is defined in an Excel sheet that's located in your user data that's uh, specified up here. We will revisit that. And this list is highly customizable. So we'll, we'll come back to that before, towards the end of this presentation. But uh, there is a variety of different motor controls and motor uh, power circuits here available. Right? The first two that you see here are the two different types of uh, uh, three-phase power stuff. So three-phase motor circuits, three-phase power feed, and you can see that they, most of these come in non-reversing, reversing, and then horizontal and non-horizontal flavors accordingly. Um, and uh, I think your screen may not look like this exactly. I, I do have this extra right-hand side prompted over here as well. And if you don't see this window and you want to see this window that says history, there is a history button at the bottom right. Um, we'll come back to that as well once we place the circuit, but you'll see that you could actually place previous configurations back in using the history function there. Um, but right off the bat, right, we have three phase motor controls, a variety of uh, reversing, non reversing over here. And there's also one phase motor controls here as well. And so if you only have one phase motor, it's the same kind of dealio. And then down here as well, we also have single line um, motor circuits as well. Um, I think the distinction is specifically that. Uh, whether it's one phase or three phase, it, it's just going to show up in one line. But if you guys are familiar with that, let me know. <laughs> uh, these are the options that are available to configure out of the box from AutoCAD Electrical. Um, and I guess I'm curious uh, how many people are uh, interested in these default circuits versus the non-default stuff and want to configure their own stuff. Because um, as far as I know, um, this is usually pretty sufficient for most people doing motor controls and the like. Um, but if you're interested in developing other types of circuits, um, I could talk about that during the customization section here as well. Okay. And so I'm going to be sticking in the three phase motor circuit world over here. Um, I did do some editing to this uh, originally myself, but um, not going to be anything that we're going to be able to see ourselves at this point. So uh, I'm just going to stick with the regular horizontal non-reversing motor right here. And you're going to see some options down here as well, right? So scale, like rung spacing, also very relevant. Um, you could configure that however you need to, but um, those are going to be the options that we have to configure right off the bat. And in fact, before I go much further, let me also just go ahead and place a three phase a power bus here as well before we get started. I'm going to go up to my ladder dag, uh, ladder, uh, ladder um, function over here. Wow, got a little dry mouth from that coffee. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and place three phase bus right over here. So insert ladder, and you can specify the spacing here. And notice that it is different than what's on the circuit builder, of course. And I'm just going to draw regular old three phase motor, right? And notice my vertical linear ladder scheme there as well. Okay. So once I have circuit builder right, um, it could simply be as easy as just choosing one of these circuits and then clicking insert. Okay. 
Um, you could do that, but just realize that if you insert it right now, it's going to be all of the default commands. And in fact, let's just go ahead and see what that looks like right off the bat. So insert. And uh, I do want to draw attention to what shows up on screen over here. You see this kind of ghost of a circuit block over here. Um, this is the circuit drawing template that comes up. And again, we'll talk about the customization in a little bit, but circuit builder is based on drawing templates somewhere else in the system. And if you see all those kind of diagonal tags over there, those represent different blocks with different attributes, which drive the automation of this function. <laughs> and so we're going to see all those little tags change as we go ahead and place this around here. No, it doesn't matter if it's on the inside or outside rung, it will detect it either way and attach accordingly. And so I'm doing on the inside rung over here and I just could go ahead and click. And you're gonna see it's gonna automatically build itself out. And if I could zoom in without it freaking out, I would. Um, and you're gonna see it's gonna go through and it's actually automating this placement process of all of these different parts, right? And so you see the, the disconnects at the very beginning over there. This is actually has a transformer. There's the motor at the end, some fuses. That's a good time. Right. And so essentially, uh, with that singular click, we were able to place a default motor configuration into this drawing with very little pain. Right. Um, and again, you know, you could do something really similar to um, save circuits, for example, but not necessarily um, as automated or <laughs> as clean as this. Right. And you can see it comes in with our different components. It comes in with all of our information over here. These are fully functional components. So you could come in here, um, you know, add in some more attributes if you want, uh, describe the rating, descriptions, all that good stuff. Since it's default, there's not as much information as maybe you would want or expect, but that's simply the very basic way to use <laughs> Circuit Builder, okay? And so let's come back in here and let's talk a bit more about what's going on over here. Now, the real kind of real kind of catch of circuit builders when you start actually just configuring this over here. I mentioned scale over here. I, I do believe this uh, derives the scale from the drawing, the drawing properties over here. And then the rung spacing you'll notice is also slightly bigger than, um, you know, slightly different than what we had on the ladder diagram as well. No, I think that's the same, I take it back. But uh, you can change that if you need to. <laughs> and so if you wanna get really into it though, right? instead of just going past insert, we're gonna go straight to configure instead. And this is where the real magic happens. All right? We're gonna be prompted the same way again. We're gonna to have to start by choosing an insertion point. Um, and just to prove a point earlier, it doesn't matter whether it's inside or outside at this point. So I'm at line 11, gonna go ahead and place that over there. It's gonna go ahead it's gonna try its best to fill that out as you're saying, but uh, instead of automatically going through all the defaults, it's gonna simply bring us this dialog box over here, okay? Uh, this dialog box has a lot of information and um, just breaking it up into the lateral sections over here, right? We have the circuit elements over here. And so this is gonna be a list of the different parts that we could kind of configure and talk about moving forward, right? And so the motor setup, you know, what kind of uh, specs do we have on the motor? What's gonna be the motor symbol? What kind of disconnecting means are we gonna have? The fuses, time delayed, what, what not? Control transformer, full voltage, whatever. All these things are gonna be different parts that we could customize. And so um, we're gonna be going down this list slowly and along the right is gonna be the sort of an annotation for extra information that will be um, filtered and regarded in the final circuits, okay? And so um, that said, motor setup, it's not too bad, but right off the bat, you know, we could put in some information about the motor right off the bat, right? So right over here, we have some pull down menus. Is it gonna be induction? Is it gonna be single phase? Is it gonna be synchronous induction? Why not? What kind of load is it gonna have? Well, we could choose all of this stuff. Maybe we wanna go up to like 50 horsepower or something like that. Uh, and then this is units, of course, <laughs> 50 units, 50 horsepower. Um, we have to choose voltage over here. You know, we'll do the standard 240. We could choose a number of phases. Um, all this information is customizable and will help us filter and apply information over here. You know, choose a frequency that's available, speed, RPM, 1800, FLA. Uh, I believe FLA is uh, full load amperage, ampericity. So you can manually fill those out yourself, but essentially this is just um, some of the parameters that we have for the actual motor load. If you want to get into it, you could choose this little magnifying glass right here and let you select a motor in a bit more granular terms. These are based on your uh, Microsoft database uh, standards over here as well. And so if you're wondering where this information comes from specifically, it's coming from your database, okay? 
Um, I was talking about this the other day, but it was, um, you, you are able to customize your databases, right? Um, you can do a lot with your databases, in fact, especially with all the catalectical. And uh, this dialog box in particular actually includes an edit button right here if you want to just directly write to it, if you have write permissions, of course. I won't talk about that today, but it's good to keep in mind that a lot of this information is driven from the database side of things. And so that said, uh, all the information and pull down that we were working with essentially is um, based around this database and you can come in and you could select one of these configurations yourself if you'd like right or you could choose your FLA and do all that business right maybe we still stick around with like I don't know 50 horsepower 3600 seems good to me why not right and uh, you could see these pull downs are the same ones that we were sort of looking at earlier as well okay and so uh, once you have your motor selected you can go ahead and click OK and you'll notice the bottom, the wire setup also gets automatically populated here as well. And I think this is one of the kind of main takeaways from Circuit Builder as well, that there are these kind of built-in dependencies between um, the different setups that you have. Wire setup you see here, we have wires one, two, and three, the size and layer, right? They actually have the um, wire standards that are available for this motor load, which I think is phenomenal. But let's take a closer look at what that wire setup means exactly. Right. And so again, you click on the magnifying glass. In general, the magnifying glass refers to kind of this lookup process. And so we're going to see it a lot in Circuit Builder, but in general, with Autocad Electrical, magnifying glasses mean lookup. Okay. And these are wire standards, essentially, is what we're looking at. Um, again, depending on what your load is and what your specifications for your project are going to be, you're going to need a certain standard of wire to get you going, right? So for example, this voltage phase FLA, that's all the stuff that came from the motor selection, for example, um, and that's gonna be locked in here. Uh, however, once your load has been finalized, you could go through and you could choose your wire standards, for example. Um, if you wanna do, I think AWG is a American wire gauge, uh, I wanna say, and then MM2 is the uh, metric version, <laughs> the millimeters. Um, you could choose uh, either copper or aluminum at this point. You could choose a different type of insulation if you'd prefer, you know? I don't, do we use a lot of aluminum wires? I'm not sure, but you know, you could choose wire, you could choose metric, and you're gonna see this list at the bottom update accordingly, right? Um, but you know, let's like go ahead and choose that. We could go ahead and choose copper. We could choose, you know, that one. Um, and then uh, once you have the wire standard set, you could go ahead and uh, go about your business over here, right? Uh, there's also derating factors that you could specify here as well. So what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, environmental factors are going to be affecting the efficiency of your wire in particular. So continuous load correction, you know, 80%, I believe. And customize the uh, motor start custom blocks we have made. Uh, yeah, it, it, exactly. Um, yeah, let, me, let me get to that in a moment, Greg. I think I have an answer for that. But um, uh, talking about the derating factors over here, right? We have continuous load correction. We have ambient temperature selection, right? And you can change that accordingly. Maybe this is going to be a, a very high degree, <laughs> maybe not that high of a degree. Um, I think the, yeah, I was reading earlier, I think the rating for wires uh, at ambient temperature are usually around 40 degrees Celsius, I believe. But um, you could choose whatever, you know, temp ambient temperature you have, and it's going to have um, this kind of derating factor that comes in to correct everything else over there. Uh, and then similarly, um, down here, you, know, you might not see all this stuff right off the bat. Yeah, so I had some of these checked on originally, my bad. Um, so that was load, that was wire standard, that was derating factors. Um, there's some other stuff we could include here as well, right? Do you have parallel wires? Sure, you can include those options here as well if you want. And I think one of the really interesting things here as well is going to include the parameters for the run distance in, uh, here. And so go ahead and click that. And it's actually going to give you a few more bits of information about the uh, wires that you've chosen down here. And so again, we see the different sizes that are available over here. Um, but you also could see, um, you could also see some of the voltage drop and you could also see the um, actual cost per kilowatt hour loss that you're going to be seeing along this chart here as well. And so this is a really powerful tool in terms of just knowing how much, uh, how efficient and how costly your particular wire configuration is going to cost, right? Because obviously we're going to, you know, maybe we'll be designing around the load of a motor in particular. Um, but uh, 
a bunch of other factors come into play that are going to be affecting our efficiency and our ultimate cost. And so things like voltage drop, for example, over uh, 250 feet, you know, may be more relevant than at 50 feet or 20 feet, for example. Um, and of course, depending on your cost per kilowatt hour, um, I'm not sure what the industrial standards are per se, but you know, depending on how much your cost per kilowatt hour, that's gonna affect your actual wire loss over uh, an annuity over there as well. And so, yeah, I, I've noticed that like a lot of people tend to really appreciate this particular dialog box because uh, this is one of those things that, you know, it's relatively easy to kind of calculate and get your head around, um, but it's also really easy to automate in a spreadsheet per se. And so this kind of, is all, all kind of rolled up into this particular wire package over here so that you could make intelligent decisions about your wiring and selections from there, okay? Um, and you could actually save this output here as well, um, we found out recently. <laughs> and so there's a save as function down here um, where you could actually export an Excel sheet with the same um, filtered list of selections if you, if you desire, okay? And so, Really nifty. And again, that's based largely around the standards and just, you know, laws of physics for <laughs> what's going to be going on with these parameters here. Okay. Okay. And so that's fantastic. And that's just the first thing, right? So that's, you know, setting up our wire standard, that's setting up our, our, our motor load over there as well. And so we got a question here as well. Can you customize the motor starter components with custom blocks we have made? Uh, yeah, you could do, um, you actually have some opportunities to select different symbols for different parts and the like. Um, depending on what block you need to replace, um, you, can, um, you can choose the, uh, what am I gonna say? Uh, that is possible to customize here as well. If you're talking about like replacing like the start button with a custom block, you could absolutely do that. Uh, I think we would need to dip into the Excel sheet to actually go ahead and see that block change. But um, let me go through the rest of this list and let me see if, uh, can the standard be changed such as UL, NEC, or CSA? I'm not sure. Are you talking about the, uh, the wired standard? Are you talking about the wire standard still there, Ron? Include? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure about that one, Ron. I'm not familiar with those standards, um, the uh, wire standards over there. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we could include additional standards. Um, I think uh, UL, NEC, CSA, are those in addition to AWG and MM2, is that right? Um, I'm not sure if you could add additional um, standards here, but these are the only configurations that are available out of the box. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a customization for that, but um, this is all the information that's available um, here currently. And so, um, yeah, and then let me talk about the other um, parts that can be configured over here as well. Uh, motor symbol allows you to choose some information over here, right? So, you know, three phase motor, or you could choose ground and protective earth over here. Um, typically we just like to flash all of these on just so we could get an idea. Um, and then you're gonna notice some annotations over here as well. And so these are also gonna be present in the final circuit if you choose that accordingly. And you can further refine these annotations by looking at the catalog part if you, desire at that point there as well. And so uh, by default, this stuff comes in there. So, you know, manufacturer AB, uh, type of motor, all that good stuff. Okay. Disconnecting means very similar stuff, right? So um, what kind of disconnect do we want? We'll do, you know, switches and fuses. Do we want normally open auxiliary contact? Sure, why not? And then you could add additional annotations over here. Right? Notice stuff like rating and like assembly, uh, that kind of stuff. Those are some of the attributes that get associated with the component in the end. So, you know, you could go through and we'll just go out and look up uh, one of these guys. Why not? Choose a fuse. Um, you could do that here as well. And, and accordingly, right, if your databases are up to date, you could incorporate attributes from your uh, catalog database accordingly. <laughs> Control transformer over here uh, with transformer, without a transformer, full voltage. We'll keep it with a transformer, keep it normal. Um, and again, note the annotations that are available over there. Power factor correction, why not? We're having a good time. Overloads, you know, we'll keep it at thermal, normally open contact, sure. Let's go ahead and see what else is over here. Motor, motor connection terminals. And notice this is just asking for the type of uh, connection terminals that we want, right? And 
it could either be square or round and it doesn't really matter for us here, but that's one of the options we have over there. Cable marker, you know, yeah, why not? Safety disconnects, absolutely, you know. And from there, you know, I, I know your first instinct, hey, Adam, I'm just gonna go ahead and press done. You could do that, it's not gonna do anything for you. However, <laughs> um, you know, you'll notice that our list right here does have these little, uh, little pencil marks next to it instead of question marks now. And that essentially means that a choice has been made for all of these guys already and they're ready to be inserted. Uh, but to actually go about inserting these components and filling out the drawing template in the background over there, we have to use these buttons along the bottom over here. Okay. And I know the pictures aren't terribly descriptive, but if you mouse over, you can see that this first one over here is going to insert only components that are highlighted in the current element. Um, of, uh, the second one is gonna be inserting all components that were in, uh, up until this point, or the last option over here is simply to insert all components and just you know have a good time for it. I'm gonna choose insert all components. Well, why don't we go over here? We'll choose the second one just to see what we're looking at. So um, this is, the idea is that you could kind of go along piece by piece to make sure everything kind of looks like you want it to, right? So it's gonna do its best to populate it and go up to a certain point until it has some other stuff to do. Uh, this particular circuit element has a little sub-circuit inside of it as well that requires some more information before we go much further. Um, but you can see if we want to actually go back, you know, we look at our stuff over here like, hey, that doesn't look right. We could actually go back and use this button to undo uh, the previous insertion so that we can go back to our business, right? And same thing over here, just make sure that we have good selections. So uh, let me talk about this transformer stuff here as well. You could choose, you know, two poles uh, or one pole over here. Um, this is stop and start, for example. I, I think this might be what you were talking about earlier, Greg. Um, funnily enough, when I was practicing this presentation, one of the edits that I did was to switch out one of the uh, symbols <laughs> for the uh, stop button over here in particular. Um, and so in that regard, you could, you could edit it and it is customizable. Uh, the default options are all the ones here that say, uh, that don't say edit specifically. That's the one that I added personally. Um, but these are, the push, these are the push buttons that are uh, available to use right off the bat, right? And these are based off of the, um, no, based off of the catalog and the selection in the Excel sheet specifically. But um, I chose like the push button. I think this is the, either the normally open or the normally closed mushroom button, I forget. But, um, you could choose any of these options for that particular um, for that particular business going on. Okay, motor starter coil, light, and so it's not really choosing the symbol. I, I suppose is what I'm getting at, but this is choosing the type of button that is going to be used. Um, as for the actual symbols that end up getting used, you could customize that to some extent as well. Okay, so uh, I think that looks good. Um, not worried about the annotations. I'm just going to go ahead and place everything from there. Bada bing, bada boom. And it's gonna do its best to fill it out over there, okay? And again, we, we did include uh, a fair bit more components than we did in the standard one in particular over there, but um, it's gonna come back up here and you know we could go back, we could undo this again if we wanna go back and edit everything, but you know, notice that some of the stuff is already kind of locked in without much to do. Uh, now, that said, I'm just gonna click done. Let's take a look at our work over here. And this is just the default three-phase motor control circuit that's in AutoCAD Electrical, right? But um, you know, you have your disconnects over here, you have your transformers down here, you have start-stop buttons over here as well. Um, again, I, I changed the symbol, um, but I had to edit the Excel sheet to do that, <laughs> for example. Um, but you could easily reference like a custom uh, symbol at that point as well if you need to. Okay. And so, and then you see there's actually extra annotation around the uh, three-phase motor and there's that protective earth that we saw earlier as well. And that's contrasted to the default circuit, which only included the bare defaults accordingly, right? Without annotations, without, you know, fancy button changes and stuff. Uh, that's what we're looking at essentially. And so depending on what your needs are, right? The circuit builder is all about configuring all of these different options accordingly. Um, I didn't name this last circuit, so let me see if I could expand this to demonstrate a little bit. Once a circuit's been configured and placed originally, it's gonna start showing up in your history list right here. Um, and you could actually replace that same circuit with that same configuration if you need to. Um, it's just a matter of coming into history and choosing your stuff once again, right? And it's gonna have all of that good information accordingly. That's what that history bar is for in particular, okay? 
And so, um, and so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we're looking at essentially for all this stuff. And we just did the horizontal three phase motor circuit, but again, there's a very same thing for power feed, for motor circuit control, single phase, single line, all that stuff is uh, available here as it is and highly configurable uh, according to what your needs are. Okay. Now, and these are active components, right? So, you know, if you really wanted to, you could come in here, edit components, start doing all this stuff. Maybe you want to, you know, adjust the ratings a little bit. Um, that's all stuff that was kind of filled in and informed by the annotation choices that we made during the configuration process. Okay. And so, um, and then, yeah. And then from there, you know, this is a live circuit essentially, and you can use it for whatever you need to. Um, uh, a question from Greg Reese, you could save the configuration or is it just the history? Um, I guess, Let's, let's just double check because um, yeah, it has the history there, um, but I think you could just end up placing the circuit. So once you have that one selected, I think we just insert it once again, like over here. And I believe the 004 one was the same one that we just dropped over there. So yeah, so it's just a matter of reinserting that history over there, right? So um, to answer your question, it, it is there to be inserted again if you need to. Um, which is kind of a safe circuit. And, you know, now that you mention it, I, I guess I'm curious what the historical uh, longevity of those um, circuits would be uh, and if it's possible to share those as well. Interesting thought. And so I'm not sure about that. I, I'm not sure if it'd be possible to share configured circuit builder circuits after the fact. Might be, might be something to check up on. Um, that said, um, that's just the, that's again, a very high level, very quick version of just using circuit builder from the get go, right? Um, it's all about just choosing the circuit that you need and then configuring it according to your needs. It, it does have a lot of tools and does have like a good amount of dependencies to make intelligent choices, for example, about your wiring, for example. And um, the configurations are, you know, they're there. And I'm not, I, I hope that's cool to you guys. Like I hope that's usable for you guys in particular. Um, and I guess uh, any questions about that as far as using Circuit Builder um, out of the box? Hmm. I'll bring up the window just in case. There we go. I haven't seen any additional come through, Adam. So feels good, man. Right on. Uh, yeah, and so. You know, like I, yeah, I don't think Circuit Builder is too bad. Like it, it has, it asks for a lot naturally <laughs> um, because, you know, it has a lot. The, the wire colors, yeah, I don't think I could call it the wire colors in particular. Um, I think what, what happens with the wire colors in particular, um, they do end up placing the wires on a particular wire layer and you could adjust the wire layer accordingly. Um, and I think there's even some, um, there's probably some customization that you could do in the Excel sheet where you could call out the color specifically, but uh, I'd have to double check what it would require to bring in um, you know, wire colors in particular there. Um, okay, Hicks, I'm sorry. Um, and before you know, I lose the rest of my time here, I, I do also want to talk a little bit about the last point over here, um, customizing circuit builder. Um, this is a really broad topic in itself. And uh, part of the reason I, I did want to take on this presentation is because I, I felt like customizing Circuit Builder was uh, an interesting topic in itself. And so without getting too into it, I, I won't be able to customize a full circuit right off the bat, but I do want to just kind of uh, call to attention the different parts that are required to customize it and kind of get you guys at least started to see what parts are customizable and what needs to be changed beyond the regular configuration that we were looking at. For example, maybe a wire color, for example. Um, the circuit builder stuff, it's based on an Excel sheet, first of all. Um, the Excel sheet has references to uh, drawing templates inside of AutoCAD Electrical. And then it also has references to API commands as well. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, this is relatively niche. And so I'm not sure that many people necessarily want to get into customized circuit builder per se, but if you want to, we're going to be looking at a, a few different locations, right? So the Excel spreadsheet, uh, which I could bring up as well, because I think it's interesting. Um, this Excel spreadsheet, this is located at this location that's specified in circuit builder at the very top over here. So, so users public documents. I have it in my recent documents for um, this guy right here. 
And so this is what the Excel spreadsheet looks like for Circuit Builder. This is essentially what's driving all of the automation and all the information inside of Circuit Builder. Um, this actually largely controls some of the user interface in particular, but you can see that three-phase motor circuit category that we were working with before has all the information over here. And it also has a reference to a different DWG template here as well. And I'm gonna pull up one of those drawings just for demonstration. Um, no, not that guy. Let me open them up. So let's look at this one, right? This is the, I think I want this one right over here. Is it this one? Forget. I'll pull up one of these, that's fine. So this is for the feed horizontal, for example. This is what the drawing templates look like. Uh, they look, they may look a bit strange, but it essentially just has these uh, marker blocks over here with different annotations and properties, which get called out in the Excel sheet and possibly in the API down the line. But um, usually what's recommended is that, you know, you start on the customization and possibly um, uh, just use the existing templates as opposed to building it from scratch because uh, these are naturally a bit involved, right? And so that's the Excel sheet that it calls out over here. So the same Excel sheet calls out a template and these templates call out a sheet name, right? The sheet names are down here and this is for the customization. Um, I thought it was, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of information to take in over here. <laughs> I regret that. But um, yeah, this is, this is essentially all the different commands that are running in the background when you run um, AutoCAD Electrical. And you can see, depending on these pull down options over here, these are the same ones that we're uh, choosing in the configure section of Circuit Builder. These have different options and these lead to different uh, API calls over here specifically. <laughs> and uh, again, before you know, I get too out of my depth over here, these API commands, uh, there's API in AutoCAD Electrical if you're interested in learning more about these commands specifically. Um, but if you're curious about changing the default selections, for example, if you're, if, if you're interested in adding um, extra information or extra options, choosing different blocks, a lot of that stuff is called out um, through this Excel sheet in particular, okay? And so, yeah, again, like I mentioned, it is relatively niche. I don't know many people that go through the extra trouble of customizing Circuit Builder. It is there and it's pretty good out of the box right off the bat, right? But um, there, there is, I, I think there's good documentation on actually customizing all that stuff as well. And so, um, I guess, could we pop off that second question as well, Nigel? Just, uh, I'm curious if anyone is interested in more circuit builder information. Uh, yep, just fired it off. Cool. So, uh, you know, when I was conceiving this particular presentation, I, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be, maybe be nice to do like an additional like custom customizing circuit builder thing, because it is kind of a whole conversation in itself, right? <laughs> and I guess in particular, I'm really curious if there are any circuits that you guys want to make in particular that's maybe outside of the realm of the kind of three-phase motor and power feed control, for example. And so, I mean, if there's enough interest, I think maybe we do a separate session. Maybe it isn't niche as I thought, and maybe, you know, we have something to talk about for down the line. Okay. Cool, 14 people. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, yeah, that's good to hear. So, yeah, I mean, the customizing circuits, and I wish I had a third poll question because I'm really curious, like, how how useful the, um, the default circuit builders are going to be for you guys and how much people are, how much people need to go off of the defaults over here, for example. Um, but yeah, okay. I think that's really interesting. So, um, for sure, uh, maybe we'll consider that for a future topic as well, okay. And so I put a picture of Frankenstein because, you know, like what else would you do when you have a custom circuit, you know, probably turn into <laughs> Frankenstein, Dr. Franken, I don't know. I don't know. And these are the, these are the template paths that I used in particular. That's just for reference for me. But um, yeah, these are the drawing template locations, right? So it's found under C users, public documents, Autodesk, AKDE version, and then under your libraries folder actually. So go figure. Okay. So I think that's all I wanted to say about Circuit Builder so far. Um, again, Circuit Builder it is out of the box, and uh, I contrast it with the, with Safe Circuit in particular. It's highly configurable compared to Safe Circuit, and I think that's where the kind of main benefit of that comes from. And once you get your head around it, even if you're interested in like the customization and stuff like that, you have a fair bit more flexibility as opposed to drawing custom circuits from scratch, saving them, and then reusing them. But um, that's up to preference. 
Do we have any Q and A? We doing all right on time, Nige? Yeah, I think you're doing okay on time. Um, looked like a question came through. Is it possible to import out inside of Inventor? Is it possible to import inside of Inventor? Um, you're talking about in importing um, one of my saved circuits into Inventor, like uh, per drawing. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I know there's like breakout diagrams and like wiring diagrams that have some workflow connectivity to Inventor. Um, I would probably need to sit down and see exactly what you need out of AutoCAD Electrical because that does take some configuration. Um, but I'm happy to talk about that as well. And I, I think we have an AVA on the same topic working with Inventor to AutoCAD Electrical. Is that right, Nigel? Yeah, we do. And it would be interesting to know what exactly, like you said, Adam, too, is like what the intended use case is um, yeah. and yeah. develop a workflow for that because um, there's a lot of ways to do a lot of different things uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in both electrical and inventor. Absolutely. And there's ways that are, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? There's the ways that the application is intended to work. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Is I guess the easiest way to put it. Yeah, no, I, I know AutoCAD, um, Inventor has like, you know, it has an electrical library essentially, and it has like places where you could call out databases in particular, like the, cat, uh, the ones with like all the catalog information, for example. Um, and you could like assign those catalog attributes to 3D parts in particular, but um, that, that itself requires configuration. And so uh, I'm thinking, you know, like best case scenario, like would it be possible to call out a circuit in AutoCAD Electrical and then import like a 3D version inside of Inventor? I'm not sure, I, I don't think so, but I know there's some information cross-pollination that's possible there. I'd have to look into that for sure. Do you guys have a Inventor Electrical workshop coming up? Uh, yeah, well, um, not a, but do we have any other events coming up, Nigel? We have productivity training coming up in, um, in September specifically, it's, uh, we haven't settled on the final topic for that, but it'll probably be some kind of symbol or library management we're thinking. Yeah, if you're looking for inventor and electrical information, um, reach out to your sales rep here at Kativ or any of us directly, and uh, we can point you in the right direction because there is some content that already exists out there, yep. um, and we do offer training for those things as well. So let us know. Yeah, absolutely. And then Wayne Kramer is another question. What does API stand for? Uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Uh, it's kind of a general term, but it's usually uh, for programs like AutoCAD or really any kind of program or software to interface with non-AutoCAD programs, essentially. And so AutoCAD has API, for example, and so um, these API commands allow it to call certain commands inside of AutoCAD so that it could do certain things, um, like automate circuit builder, for example. Are the spreadsheets, also from Wayne, are the spreadsheets linked to the materials database? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> um, there are, I don't think there's any references to material like MDBs in here, per se. Um, I would assume that depending on what materials you're talking about exactly, um, it should be taken care of. It should be wrapped up in AutoCAD Electrical specifically. So these API commands interact with AutoCAD Electrical, then AutoCAD Electrical should have the, that information. Are blocks another option? Yes, blocks are another option. Um, and I believe I had to go into the Excel sheet specifically to edit those in particular. And so, um, I should remember it. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me pull it up because I, I, I specifically changed the block that I referenced here when I when I changed this one. So that's an error because I have the Excel sheet open. It's trying to reference. So horizontal uh, non-reversing over there. So let's look at that sheet over here. So three phase horizontal non-reverse. I think it was this one that I was working on. And let's see. Was it the stop one that I edited or was it a different one? Yeah, motor symbol. We could look at this one too, actually. Yeah, I swear I've done this before, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure the block callout for the symbol is inside of um, inside of the Excel sheet, and I think I edited it here, right? So. Yeah, so like for example, right here, um, 
this is a, this is a bit of a larger thing, but this is like a, this is an API command, right? And for reference, if you're interested in learning about API for AutoCAD Electrical, you can come over here under the help sign. There's API help in particular, um, and I believe these commands in particular were there's a whole section dedicated to Circuit Builder, and it has the functions and their arguments in particular that we're interested in, right? So I don't know AC get, and then it has this format, right? So ACE and then uh, these inputs for code name and options, for example. And so what you're seeing in the, in the Excel sheet um, is essentially those commands with inputs, right? So like this HPB11M is the symbol that I chose for this particular button edit right here, okay? And so that's very deep in the woods and uh, I definitely don't wanna misrepresent any of this information. So I hope that answers your question at the very least. So you could absolutely swap out blocks if you really wanted to. Um, it would just require um, some deeper understanding of the Excel sheets here, okay? Okay, so um, I think that's all I got for you guys. Um, is there anything else I've missed? Um, again, I think it would be really interesting to maybe spend some more time and I think even like maybe individually talk about the customization if that's a high priority for you guys, but um, that's Circuit Builder, you know, Circuit Builder, again, it's a pretty good time. We'll go back here and we'll just leave that as the last slide. Um, again, it's all about, you know, saving time, reducing mistakes. It is very flexible and of course, highly customizable as well. Um, good stuff. So I would definitely recommend it. If you guys haven't used it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Even at the default level, it's still very useful. Um, if you guys have any other questions or comments, I think I will go ahead and end it there, but feel free to reach out to us. Um, anything else I'm missing here, Nigel? I think you're good to go, Adam, um, in terms of getting the content out to everybody. Um, so like we said, if, you, if you're more interested in any of this, please, please reach out to us. Um, and we can go ahead and answer any of your additional questions that you do have. And um, yeah, anything, any last words, Adam? Uh, no, not for me, man. Yeah, hopefully it's not the last you've seen of me, but uh, <laughs> hopefully they bring me back again. So <laughs> it was a pleasure. I appreciate the time and I uh, hope you guys are staying safe. Absolutely. Take it easy, Adam, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Right. Take care, guys. Bye.